All right, I've just finished up my grind for solo queuing to diamond in the finals, and we have to talk. Firstly, we can all agree that solo queue sucks. My heart literally goes out to all of you grinding out ranked alone in season one, because I'll say that it is probably one of the most painful experiences I've had in a while. Yes, the finals is a team-based game, and I'll agree with the point that the game is obviously better when playing with a team or friends. The things I've experienced in the last week have actually drained my mental brain to the point where I was just freaking out after going 100 fame points away from diamond to 1,000. Fucking clueless. He doesn't even know how to aim. I'm going to put money on he doesn't know how to aim. Oh. Okay, so let's start off with ranked itself. In no universe should any solo player be queued with bronzes and go up against triple diamond discord players. We all know that, and everyone's obviously talking about it across every YouTube channel on the finals, and Bark will fix that in Season 2. I don't mind playing against teams queued together, um, as long as I actually have the backup to support attacking and defending the objectives, again with the closer ranks, but I know that players might also be interested in a solo slash duo lobby queues only, but of course I think that right now we don't really have the play account, I don't think, to kind of like allow for it, um, but I'm down for that idea too. For the casual experience, the game's been pretty damn solid, of course, in pushing out content. I'd actually say a lot more than the average FPS game. Um, I do agree, though, um, with you watching this video right now, where you may say, yeah, but Thix, there isn't much to do in the game. Um, and I really think that the kind of the key word in this scenario is depth. This area will be targeted the most from Embark in Season 2, and currently rumoured, we can actually expect to see a new game mode, uh, because there are actually posts and discussions going around that there's like a 4v4 or like a 5v5 mode leaking into Season 2. Building on top of that, of course, a new map, um, and obviously gadgets are predicted to be in the game, um, and I'm gonna hope that, that the gadgets kind of change up the meta leading into the following months throughout Season 2, so it gives some players like myself that like theory crafting a little bit more to go in depth with. I talk to a lot of people about this game, um, to the point where my friends actually put a 60 second time period where I can talk about the finals each day. But one of the main issues when I talk to other people, whether that be in online matches, doesn't specifically come from content in this game. It comes from actually playing the game. Time to Kill is a huge talking point. I've spoken to players coming from titles such as Rainbow Six Siege, all the way to Counter-Strike, and most of them mentioned that it just kind of feels exhausting taking fights, having to combat what I call the shush meta, which is basically shields, heals, and healths. Really, you could come to the conclusion that players like you and me are used to it, right? We could basically say back, well, you know, maybe this game isn't for you if you don't like the time to kill, but I actually kind of agree that over an extended period of time, playing the game it really doesn't feel great not being rewarded for kind of hitting your shots. Um, or even more specifically, I think the, the main argument is actually headshots. I think that headshots should kind of be a bit more rewarding, especially at longer distances as well. Now, we, we wouldn't really want, of course, AKMs and Scars and Revolvers, you know, dealing one taps uh, across the arena, um, which is obviously a shame, of course, because um, I am actually a huge fan of Scream. Um, but, you know, it doesn't suit this game. My personal philosophy, I love tapping. I love using the calmness of aim to be paired with uh, being able to be very precise with my shooting. But I think that from a tactical shooter standpoint, looking into the finals, people don't see that this game doesn't present a scenario for rewarding only gun damage. But again, I think buffing longer range headshot damage would actually feel better in my opinion. Some weapons have kind of been dusted off uh, over the game as well, and I think a decent mitigation could actually be having weapons deal different shield damage over health damage. Um, if I give like a weapon example, let's just say, let's go with heavy, right? So for example, right now, um, the M60 is pretty much a weapon that's kind of been left to die uh, in the dust in the garage uh, with people, you know, favoring the Lewis gun or the auto shotgun. And I think that to kind of bring weapons like that back in line uh, with the overall game, make it so that the shield damage is higher with the M60, for example, but keep the player damage the same. What this then does is it kind of gives more variation on what players actually want to use in certain scenarios. Let's say you go into a game and you see that there's like maybe three or four heavies in the tournament match that you're going to be playing in. That kind of allows weapons that have gone silent in the meta to be chosen based off of the comp that they're against. Of course, that is like more for the ranked experience. You know, casual is pretty damn good in this game. Um, I mean, the limited events, like what do we have recently? The, the smoking smoking guns event, that was very well received uh, within the community. And I think that they will only continue to thrive in this space with the current players. 
on the Steam charts, I don't think it really brought in that many new players or kind of brought back players uh, with those limited time events, which is actually kind of interesting. Um, but I kind of feel that most people are just kind of waiting to see what Season 2 will bring before trying to commit back to the game. Next up, another concern I have is that the way Ranked is currently, the skill level isn't really indicated by your rank. Um, what I mean by that is typically if you queue more, you're obviously going to gain more fame points, right? And as we get to the later stage of each season, a player that is actually bronze could essentially queue all the way to gold or even platinum, but mechanically and skill-wise, uh, or even, you know, macro-wise, actually be a silver player, if that makes sense. I get it, of course, because obviously the main goal of climbing ranked uh, right now is because players want that diamond reward skin. And at the time of when I ranked up to diamond, I, I did a check on my uh, position on the leaderboard, and it was roughly about 15 to 20,000 players currently in diamond four and above uh, based on the rank that I received at the time. If you didn't watch my last video, essentially I wanted the cash out system to be reworked to reward teams for defending, especially against third party teams. You guys have given me some really awesome ideas to collect together, and I'll present some simple ideas in which we could change the system to venture Benefit all players. When a team is defending or holding a cash out, they could have access to singular bonuses such as, let's say one of them was uh, increased cash rewarded whilst defending getting elimination. So for example, right now in the finals, if you get an elimination, you add $200, which is 200 points towards your overall team score. And I think that if you're defending, then you can actually double that and make that 400 instead. There could also be slight health regeneration buffs or even lowered ability times. But the thing is, just when I read these in the comments that you guys are giving me, they're also they're obviously great ideas, and I, I love the suggestions that you guys bring in. But I'm just really not too sure on these things, um, just personally, because if I take a step back and look at it, it adds another layer of complexity to the game. And then obviously, you know, the embark balancing with that might still be in question. Um, there was actually some other ideas to build on this, um, which essentially meant that whilst you're defending, eliminations kind of feed or add on to the regeneration of your gadgets to help you against third parties, um, or it's uh, you know activated quicker when you wipe a team. I'm just when thinking about it, I'm just not fully on board with this idea. Uh, but there was obviously a few of you mentioning that instead of just you know going all in and putting it in the game, they could leverage those LTMs, those limited time modes like smoking guns, to test this out publicly, and then you know for all of us. To together as a community give feedback on those ideas i think with the data that i had and, and literally trying to reply to each and every single one of you like i'm so grateful for you guys commenting uh, there were so many of you um it was about 65 percent in favor of a cash out rework um but the 35 percent that were kind of against it made some great points um with some arguments feeling like basically it might be that you wouldn't be able to come back if the game slowly slips away which i do also think is a fair observation I feel like this area of the game for cash out is probably too complex to rework this soon and I don't think we'll see any changes on this in season 2 at least and I think cash outs will still be the same. People were interestingly enough suggesting alternative ranked game modes instead of just cash out. Maybe King of the Hill for example as well. Um, because of this 4v4 or I guess 5v5 rumor, um, maybe have a take on what an attack slash defend game mode would be like a counter strike. I know it sounds pretty off because you know the finals has way more layers of complexity but you know it doesn't hurt to test it out for fun um you know i was even thinking as like a like a daydreaming scenario like the attackers could be the cns group team for example um and then the defenders of the team uh would be uh from the game show side which would be like a cool law event styled idea yes having different modes within ranked does obviously start to lean towards that overwatch route um, but i'm just kind of throwing out some simple ideas for the future Realistically, in my personal opinion, I think that the ranked mode itself is pretty damn fine as it is. And maybe when I'm playing with players at my rank, I wouldn't mind the way the cash out is currently in the game. I also made a pretty bad take in the season one video where I said that I wanted the gadget progression to be reset. Now, the reason why I mentioned it um, was because I come from a very depressing background of uh, Escape from Tarkov. But really what brings players back into Tarkov is the new fresh feeling of starting again. So that's why I made the point. And on top of that, I made the point because the gadget progression reset um, into each beta anyway, close beta one, close beta two, open beta, and then the, the finding the game, the full game release, right? Obviously, I kind of take that point back because, you know, Tarkov is an extraction shooter completely different from uh, the finals. So for you guys, uh, I did actually get confirmation fresh from the devs for you watching right now. And here is the official news. Uh, your gadget progression is not reset. Uh, so obviously you can be rest assured that, you know, your effort and time isn't lost there, which obviously I, it kind of makes sense for players that don't have as much time to commit to the game. They don't want to re have to rebuild the whole gadget up again so I, I really understand that 
Another topic that's come up a lot is the weapons and gadgets in the game currently. Um, some people are kind of having that feeling that when playing in ranked, you're kind of forced to, to play like a certain build um, for the highest odds to do well. Um, and I kind of said the highest odds. I mentioned it in that way because I think people can still use off-meta weapons such as, you know, the shield chads out there or the sledgehammer boys. Uh, shout out to you guys, by the way, for the, uh, you know, the horror game experience. Um, but, but in a way, I do agree. I think in a team scenario, Heavy normally kind of runs, you know, the Lewis Shotgun, RPG, C4, and Dome Shield, and it really has been that way as standard for a long time, since, like, Close Beta 1, um, with the Dome Shield being a bit more of a flex to allow for, like, gas mines, for example. I do think a, a good response to that is for Embark to essentially release gadgets in Season 2 and beyond that kind of change the meta up to force players to go out of that comfort zone and react. But there really isn't that much wrong with playing the most efficient stuff. I think it's just the countering it that is difficult and kind of keeping the game a little bit more fresh in that sense. That's what I think that they'll try and target in Season 2. Of course, we saw the weapon leaks going around with the FAMAS being showcased. Typically, that weapon is obviously known for its burst. But it actually reminds me that the style or the look of the weapon reminds me of the, the FAMAS in Black Ops 1, if you guys uh, remember that, which actually kind of brings back some memories. So obviously we'd have to see what weapons would be new across all contestants to mix up some stuff. Um, but honestly, my own personal opinion, I really don't think that new guns will change anything meta-wise about the game. That's going to be on how the new map is, that's going to be on if there are any game mode changes, uh, and obviously the gadgets in the game as well. It's only those three three things. I don't think that, unless they go crazy on specific types of weapons, much will be altered in that area. Now obviously I do think nukes, will hopefully get completely obliterated in Season 2. The problem is casually, you know, if you take a standpoint and obviously just forget about how overpowered it was, the nukes are a fun mechanic casually, right? Yes, in casual play, I know it's broken there, but being able to rocket a C4 across the map it's pretty damn fun, um, so I don't think that that mechanic specifically would be removed. I, I really think that all they have to do is adjust that mechanic for it to be a lot more unpredictable. Either way, I'm sure Season 2 will obviously be a nice refresher into Embark's vision for the future steps onto the finals. Um, obviously, I'd like to mention to you guys that this is not Embark's end goal or destination, um, and obviously we're going to see streamers come across into Season 2. Maybe they're going to love it, or maybe they'll hate it, but you know, they're just, they'll just they think that Season 2 is the end scenario, and this is the only way Embark's going to make the game, and you know nothing else will change at this point, and it's like, no, they're, they're developing in the game. Like It's kind of like they're not slapping on the early access title, right? But it kind of feels like Embark, you know, uh, uh, secretly saying, this is, uh, this is kind of early access, guys. Like, don't judge the full game yet. Um, and I kind of think that that is the case, but I, I really think that once we get more tools to allow for the community, maybe you guys are watching this video as well, we want tools to, to thrive in this game, right? So what I mean by that, like private matches, maybe like a replay mode or being able to go into the map and exploring it yourself to create content, uh, you know, better thumbnail screenshots and stuff so we don't have to use AI backgrounds, um, you know, custom games and, you know, just overall like a better ranked experience. Um, I do think that with those things in the game, we'll actually start to see players slowly come over um, in due time. So obviously with the date of the upload of this video, we have about four or five days left until season two. I hope you guys get those battle pass objectives completed uh, and the rank you guys desire. I, I, I know that uh, in my discord and obviously in the comments, some of you guys are still grinding out last minute trying to get for that push obviously over the weekend. Uh, but that's pretty much all for me. So this is going to be my last video before season two releases. I do have high hopes, but I don't think that we are going to be, you know, in fairy tale dreamland in season two, right? I, I think that it's going to take a little bit longer time, but I would like it to be a further step forward into a better path for our game that we love and play the finals so that's pretty much everything my name has been thicks as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the podium